live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. The fallout from the scandal involving some of the state's largest abattoirs is deepening as protesters ramp up their fight. A month after harrowing footage of alleged animal abuse was exposed to the public, activists have returned, threatening to disrupt operations. A warning the vision in this story is confronting. Taking their battle directly to the source, protesters lining Tasmanian Quality Meat's Cressy plant, beefing up its calls to end animal cruelty. We don't want animals to be treated in a way where they're suffering, they're experiencing pain, they're experiencing terror. Promising to disrupt animal transport trucks arriving at the facility, asking for five minutes to say their goodbyes. Show the world the animals as individuals as they go in to be killed. That's a win for the animals. People can actually really identify with those animals. It comes after shocking footage came to light last month, allegedly showing workers abusing livestock at five abattoirs across the state. TQM among those named and shamed. We want people to be able to see what happens and then to make informed choices. And we want action to be taken. The videos sending shockwaves throughout the community. I think it's really fair that consumers and farmers feel really betrayed. And the state government, who quickly established a task force to address rising concerns, but activists fear its response doesn't cut it. They were talking about these really serious actions and then all they've come out with is this task force. The state government is sticking by its plan, promising to stamp out poor behaviour. Anything less than the highest possible standards uh, impacts on industry and impacts on the economy and impacts on the Tasmanian brand. Tas farmers also confident impending recommendations will mean history won't repeat itself. What we want to do is make sure that we can support and make sure processes that are put in place are done properly and implemented and monitored over time. TQM CEO Jake Oliver says it is committed to upholding the highest level of animal welfare standards and it has introduced changes to policies and procedures and are committed to continued improvements. Activists say if they don't see significant change, they will consider returning to abattoirs to further expose what they call acts of horror, meaning more protests like this could be on the cards. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Labor says the government should abandon a project which would add an extra lane on Hobart's southern outlet, labelling it a dumb idea. They say it's years behind schedule and over budget, but the Premier is adamant it's just another example of the opposition being negative without offering a solution. A greater call for Transport Minister Michael Ferguson to ditch plans for a fifth lane on Hobart's southern outlet. He needs to abandon this project. It doesn't make any sense. It's going to cost millions of dollars, probably over $100 million to do this, to get no benefit. The latest Right to Information report estimates the project's cost will exceed its $35 million budget, adding it will create challenges for critical services and people headed into the city, potentially leading to patient delays and avoidable fatalities. But today, the Premier dug his heels in. Now, the Labor Party can criticise all they like. I mean, only the Labor Party uh, can be criticising jobs and investment in infrastructure. It sparked calls for alternative transport solutions instead in an effort to get cars off roads. Do what they need to do to put more money into the public transport systems and the alternative forms of uh, transport. 10% of Tasmanians live south of Hobart now and they need tr transport solutions now not uh, three or four or five years into the future. Labor says another downside of the project are the houses that would be acquired to make way for the wider road, a move which the party says comes in the middle of a housing crisis. The government's adamant it has an obligation to improve traffic flow, calling the transit lane the only solution. Today, listing a number of projects set to benefit our growing state. Roads, bridges, stadiums, high performance centres, schools, hospitals. Uh, we're builders, uh, not blockers. The first stage of the project will begin soon in the CBD, with the transit lane to be constructed next year. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. 
Tasmanian Liberal politicians have taken a swipe at the Albanese government, arguing it hasn't delivered on its election promise. Federal member for Bass, Bridget Archer, and Senator John O'Dunniam say Tasmanians are under pressure from a cost of living crisis spiralling out of control. Federal Labor's talked a big game. They went to the election saying that no one would be left behind, that things would be better under their government. And it's 18 months on and we're waiting to see when it's going to be better. They've done nothing about reducing the cost of childcare. They've done nothing to assist Tasmanians struggling with the cost of power beyond uh, these simple handouts. Tasmania's Labor leader, Rebecca White, has hit back. We know that there are so many more things that the Tasmanian Liberal government could be doing to support families, deal with the cost of living pressures. That's why the Labor Party has made announcements around health and cost of living and housing. We'll keep doing what we can to support Tasmanian families. The Salvation Army says average household budgets are being stretched to breaking point for thousands of families. A police operation to catch an alleged thief has unfolded west of Avoca. Police used road spikes on the Esk Main Road this afternoon to intercept a vehicle they believe was stolen and used in a theft at St Helens earlier in the day. One man resisted arrest with police having to use OC spray to take him into custody. Three other people in the vehicle were also arrested. They remain in custody while police continue their investigations into several other matters. Half the adult Morgian skates in Tasmania's new captive breeding program have died after just one month. Scientists at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies don't know the cause of the two deaths. It has prompted renewed calls to stop fish farming in Macquarie Harbour, where oxygen levels are too low for the endangered species to survive. The number that that die or survive in a captive breeding program is not really relevant if there's nowhere safe to release them to afterwards. Uh, otherwise they will, uh, you know, it's effectively a zoo. Our government believes that salmon farming can coexist with the Morgan Skate in Macquarie Harbour and we're certainly uh, very supportive of the work that is being done uh, to look at how science can actually help in this space. The Morgian skate population is believed to be around a thousand. A multi-million dollar tourism fund is hoping to weed out some of the challenges faced by the hospitality industry and grow tourist numbers. A new Norfolk restaurant has used its share to boost the kitchen and garden experience for the hundreds of customers coming through the doors over summer. Touring and tasting some of the new additions to Agrarian Kitchen, worth $250,000. Gone towards uh, fitting out the new cooking school kitchen and uh, the amazing garden in the old uh, wall section of uh, the exercise yard of Ward C. The funds come from a tasty $8 million tourism innovation grant program, which is helping local traders meet growing business demands and targeting workforce challenges, including staff shortages. The hospitality sector is some 8% of the workforce here in Tasmania, so it's these projects that are so important to growth, to jobs in rural and regional communities. For this new Norfolk business situated in Willow Court, the grant means an expanded garden, a new cooking school and outdoor spaces. That's more chefs, more gardeners and more produce to sell. Around a third of our staff actually live in the valley as well. so. Uh, and a lot of those have moved out here in order to be able to work here. The fund said to help Tasmanian traders pave the way for a thriving summer season of tourism to bring more people to the region. We're able to bring people to the Derwent Valley and then other businesses benefit from that. Uh, Tasmanians and indeed uh, those from interstate and overseas uh, getting a true taste of the authenticity of the Tasmanian experience. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmanian football fans are still waiting on their own AFL team now have merchandise to back up their dream. A local disability employment service is creating scarves, which some say have potential to become collector's items. Putting a dream in seams. 30 workers at Taz Textiles creating merchandise to spruik a Tasmanian AFL team. I take in the uh, the old scarf off the machine, press it up, yep. take solving off. 
Mastering her skills for the past three decades, there's been high demand for Lizzie's quality work. 600 scarves already sold through the Believe Tasmanian website. Oh, every team needs a scarf. It's sort of uh, the mandatory piece of equipment that you need to have when you head off to the football. There's a lot of talk about athletes and, and football. Uh, but the downstream and the ripple effects of the football club and our opportunity to work with businesses all over Tasmania, uh, for them to be a part of this journey that we're on is really exceptional. But as one door opens, another will close. The merch due to be taken off the market when the AFL club comes online in March. I would encourage anyone who's interested to, to get on board and purchase one. I personally think that these are going to become a collector's item. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. More big names are destined for the stages of one of the state's largest multi-day music festivals. Party in the Paddock has dropped its second line-up announcement, adding the likes of Tash Sultana, Rule and Tazzy's own Luca Brasi. They'll join previously named headline acts Rudy Mental and Milky Chance. Opening night is less than a month away with San Cisco starting the party on February 8. Tasmania has pinched top spot from Queensland on the WNCL ladder and tomorrow they'll be wanting it back. But first they'll need to go through all 11 of the undefeated Tigers. Yesterday's meeting with the Fire saw top scores from the Tigers of 97, 43 and 70 not out while the bowlers all took two wickets each. That kind of depth is a coach's dream. Everyone in our top six has scored a 50 in the season so that's a pretty special effort and we've got wicket takers all across the board with our bowling group. If it's not your day you don't want to be walking into the sheds thinking it, you know it's all up to one or two people and you can walk off and be like okay it wasn't my day today but I know that I've got an entire batting order behind me. The Tigers are also boosted by the likely return of Heather Graham from injury. The Hurricanes end their Big Bash campaign as winners. Skipper Nathan Ellis helping by taking care of Glenn Maxwell early, which the big show wasn't too happy about. And it did the trick to slow down the Stars' chase. The Canes winning by seven runs. The performance coming too late, though, to save their season. A Claremont course record in the first round has helped Gold Coast golfer Max Russell to victory at the Tasmanian Junior Amateur, shooting nine under par, five strokes clear of his closest rival. 56 boys and girls from clubs around the country have been in Tasmania for the 72-hole tournament. Devonport's Jonty Lunson, a best of the locals at five over. Our best young bowlers are also going head-to-head -head at Longford in the state junior championships. 30 competitors, one just 12 years old, rolling out for the three-day tournament. Heats wrapped up today ahead of finals tomorrow. Tasmanian Hall of Famer John Bingley has died. Cutting his teeth on the field for East Devonport, John played for St Kilda in the club's first and only Premiership win in the 1966 Grand Final. Returning to Tasmania the following season to play for Clarence, leading the Roos to their first Premiership as captain coach in 1970. After leaving football, he then went on to create a successful sporting merchandise company. John Bingley was 82. A-League is returning to Tasmania when the Western United play the Wanderers at North Hobart Oval Saturday next week. Love going to Tassie. Um, we've had a good record there, which is great. Um, you know, all the fans, they, they come out. They play a double header the following Saturday, the women taking on the Mariners before the men play Sydney FC. Good evening Hobart, a nice warm 31 degrees, the warmest population centre around the state today. Launceston 26, Devonport 24 and Burnie 23. Temperatures up to 10 degrees above average today, particularly in the south. Bushy Park and Grove 30, Campania, Ooze and Strawn all 29, King Island 28 degrees, Flinders Island and Friendly Beaches 25 and St Helens 23 today. Areas of cloud did build up over the north of the state, just isolated cloud elsewhere, particularly over the south and southwest. Most of the cloud over the mainland is linked to thunderstorms as well, some high level cloud over South Australia and low cloud spiralling over the far north. Tomorrow a cold front will cross the state, you certainly won't miss it as a low also attaches to it. Uh, more areas of low pressure too over the north of the mainland. The 30 knot nor'easterly nor will shift west northwestly at similar speeds during the day, swells at two metres in southern waters. We do have a strong wind warning for all Tasmanian coastal waters. Now not often we have the exact same forecast everywhere around the state, temperatures in the low to mid 20s along with a shower and possible storm. That's the way it is for Hobart, Jeeveston and Bothwell. Launceston, similar sort of forecast as well. 23 the top, a possible storm. Same for Devonport, 22 the high and 23 for Cressy. And same for Burnie, 21 degrees there along with strong
drawn, a possible early storm for Curry and 20 degrees and down the east coast nothing different. Showers and possible storms. St Helens 23 along with Orford, Swansea 24. On Thursday more showers and possible afternoon thunderstorms. A partial clearing on Friday apart from showers over the west and south easing during the afternoon and evening. And on Saturday a few showers developing over the northeast, creeping down the east coast during the day. 32 and sunny in Perth, a partly cloudy day in Adelaide. Possible storms forecast for Melbourne, 23 there. Canberra the same. Sydney, a top of 29 and 30, the high for Brisbane with showers up the east coast. And still balmy in Hobart, 28 degrees, sun shining, cloudy in Launceston, 24 and 22 right now in Devonport. Kim, you've got to concentrate. I've noticed you weren't watching the weather at all tonight. What are you doing? Online getting tickets to party in the paddock or something? Get me some too. I love Luca Brasi. But you're hot on that other mainland act. What are they called? Um... Oh, leave me alone. Leave, leave, what? <laughs> leave me alone. That wraps up tonight's bulletin. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night, everyone. Good night.